I'm just back here with another video. Um, so Brian Lilly just asked a simple question, and I haven't watched this video yet. I do want to react to it with you guys. It's titled, Simple Question, Do You Miss Stephen Harper Yet? Now, I haven't actually made any videos about Stephen Harper, and you'd think I would have by now. It just never really crossed my mind to do it with all this, you know, anti-Trudeau talk. But uh, let's get into that in just a second. But before we do, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. It really, really helps grow this channel, and I appreciate every single one of you who does. Also, leave your thoughts in the comments section because I always enjoy uh, reading and engaging with you guys. So uh, let's get into this video here, and then we'll talk about it after, like usual. Power in 2015. That's almost nine years ago. It'll be nine years this fall. And they came back into power, the Liberals did, saying they're going to make Canada back. They're bringing Canada back on the international stage. The truth is, we're not well respected on the international stage. That's something we've talked about before. But Stephen Harper was considered an elder statesman of the G7 before he left. He was someone well respected within the G20. During the 2008 2009 financial crisis, Harper his finance minister, Jim Flaherty, Mark Carney, who was then Canada Bank of Canada governor and working closely with the Harper government, they all led committees of the G20 at rebuilding the global economic system after that. Nobody asks Canada to do those sorts of things now. We are, you know, sitting at the children's table. Now, meanwhile, our policies have taken us in a completely different direction, especially since October 7th. Came across this clip as I was going through uh, some of my files the other day. Stephen Harper in 2015 talking about how we would change and how the Liberals and the NDP had a different view. He was talking about his position on Israel, but also Iran. Check it out. You know, my friends, I'm always amazed, and I hope you notice, how the Liberals and NDP are always criticizing us for not being friendly enough with Iran, but for being too friendly with Israel. <laughs> And where are we now after that change? Well, we're no longer, no one is claiming that we're too friendly with Israel, except for the people that want us to fully back Hamas, you know, Melanie Jolie style. Uh, but we are too friendly with Iran. The Trudeau guys came in wanting to reestablish relations with Iran. They wanted to back uh, getting out of the sanctions uh, that were imposed upon Iran. They, they just... They loved the people in Tehran, they, they loved the Islamic Republic regime in Tehran, and they have been very cold towards Israel since the start. Where has that gotten us? To the point where we're no longer close friends with Israel, to the point where we backed moves that allowed Iran to become the state sponsor of Hezbollah, of Hamas, of the Houthis, to fund the war that's taking place in the Middle East. That's where this policy has taken us. Elections have consequences. Policies and decisions have consequences. And I'd say that the ones that Trudeau did, the changes that he made back from when Stephen Harper was considered not friendly enough to Iran and too friendly with Israel, I'd say they were the wrong ones, the bad ones that led us to this place. Let me know what you think. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> you know, and I don't really want to get it too much into the whole, you know, Middle East situation. I'm not well versed on it, but... It is weird that they do back these, let's just call them groups out of Iran and, you know, the Houthis and, and whatnot like that. They do talk about, you know, t essentially taking their side in that conflict. Now, again, I don't think we should be taking sides at all. So I'm not on Israel's side either. Um, I think that we should be, I mean, if you want to morally support, well, even that, even that's weird because this isn't the moral situation that's going on. Both sides I've been pretty guilty of some pretty, pretty terrible war crimes. So I think that personally we should back out of this. Uh, we shouldn't be sending any money, any troops, nothing. This We shouldn't even be talking about it, really, in my opinion. This has been going on for, what, 80, 90 years now? What are we going to do to stop the fighting? I mean, listen, if you want to get involved in some sort of, like, you know, a peace broker, a ceasefire, you know, uh, which I do believe we have peace, uh, peace negotiators on our team, uh, if you want to do that, fine. Um, I don't know if that's going to work, but I mean, this, staying out of this whole conflict is is a big part of, you know, this new not new, but it's it's a Canada first movement where we're really tired of seeing our tax dollars go overseas to other countries that aren't named Canada, especially when we have all the crime, all the poverty, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We need our money and our support 
everything that we have, all of our assets and resources to stay here and work on Canadian issues. And that's really all I'm going to say about that. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. Now, in terms of you know what Brian Lilly said, we don't have any you know, respect internationally. That is true. I mean, we all know that every time you watch like a G7 summit or any other world leader talk about Canada, uh, they don't really have too many good things to say about our leadership or leadership, if you even want to call it that. I think that's using the term leadership pretty loosely, but they don't have good things to say. We've been referred to as a banana republic many times. Right. So it's. But anyway, to answer the question, do I miss Stephen Harper? Well, I do miss low crime and affordable rent. You know what I don't miss, though? Bailing out bankers after the 2008 financial crisis, which was which is which was also slightly brought up. Not sure why Brian Lilly didn't mention the fact that it was actually Stephen Harper who bailed out the bankers who committed fraud with our tax money. Right. So we shouldn't be bailing out bankers either and i understand this all it needed to happen it did not need to happen without any consequence those people should have been removed and put in jail you can restore a banking system fine but don't give it to the same fucking people who ripped people off in the first place those people should have went to jail it was fraud blatant fraud if you were an i if you or i committed that we'd be in jail but there's special rules for very powerful people as it seems um, but other than that, other than the financial crisis of the bailing out the bankers and not really reforming the bank system at all, and you know that the first the, the first chance the bankers have to do the same kind of thing again, they will absolutely do it because they know they're going to get away with it. Reform the banks, it takes money to do it, fine, I understand that. But don't just bail them out and say, okay, here's your money and we'll leave you alone again. That's bullshit. You can't just let them commit fraud like that. That's that's not acceptable. And no one in this country or any other country where this has happened should be okay with that either. But let me know what you guys think in the comments once again. Do you miss Stephen Harper? Do you think things were better nine years ago than they are now? Because I sure as hell do. Not to mention, Justin Trudeau would have bailed out the bankers too, right? Like liberals and Demo or sorry, liberals and conservatives are actually really, really similar in that. When the powerful people who actually run the world, when they get in trouble, yeah, they'll, they need their buddy politicians' help to essentially just give them our money. And Trudeau would have done it just like Harper did it. Pierre Polyev would do it. Jagmeet Singh would do it. They would all do it. So to be fair, I can't just put it on Stephen Harper, but he was the one in office uh, when it happened. So uh, again, let me know what you think about that situation. and any, Anything else that's on your mind? Any video suggestions? I, I always... Uh, I always look forward to uh, reading any of your comments. So thanks again so much for watching, guys, and I'll be back shortly with a new video.